Welcome to Match Pack, your guide to all the facts and figures ahead of the weekend's Premier League fixtures. There were 40 goals across the last match week, with seven of those scored by Chelsea. Thomas Tuchel's men are top of the pile, a point above second place Liverpool, and now make the long trip to Newcastle. Another team on form in front of goal is Leicester. Brendan Rodgers' side have 10 in their last four league games. Next up for the Foxes, resurgent Arsenal at the King Power. But first, Manchester United. After last weekend's five-goal humbling at the hands of Liverpool, the Red Devils need a response at Spurs. Salah and Naby Keita! Alexander-Arnold and Jota have scored! Here comes Naby Keita, Liverpool have three. Jota and there's Mo Salah, it is four. The match is extraordinary, the scoreline is extraordinary. Not even in Manchester United's deepest, darkest nightmares could they have envisaged losing 5-0 at home to their bitterest rivals. Though there have been two 6-1 humiliations in the past, last weekend's defeat to Liverpool was surely the most painful day for United in the Premier League era. Manchester United have struggled. Um, I think tactically they've been a bit all over the place. I think they're not playing as a team in terms of certainly out of possession and even you can even say in possession. But I think right now the three bigger teams, such as City, Chelsea and Liverpool, are all ahead of them. Also as well, I think when you go 1-0 down and then you keep having to come back, having to dig deep to pull something out, that doesn't bode well because that can't always happen. Liverpool one of the best teams in the world. So you give Liverpool them kind of opportunities, that's what happens. You go four down at half-time and the game's out of sight. So I think first and foremost they need to start games better, but also as well they really need to have a look at the tactically where they are, certainly in and out of possession. The Malays at Old Trafford last weekend even stymied Bruno Fernandes on the day. But despite United's turbulent start to the season, he still created 34 chances, at least nine more than any other player in the division. Certainly since he's been at United, Bruno's been their best player. He's been the most influential. They've really needed him. Again, good signing at a time where they really needed a superstar to come in and take the club by the scruff of the neck, and he did that. So, as I said, he's still very, very important for them. Press ball's corner. Oh, it's in! West Ham take the lead, Mikel Antonio! It's safe to say Tottenham's trip to West Ham didn't exactly go to plan. Undone by Mikel Antonio's second-half strike, Spurs didn't register a single attempt themselves after the break. It's the third time that's happened since the start of last season. This campaign has been very up and down. After the first three games, hadn't conceded a goal. Top of the table, Nuno won. Manager of the month and people were talking about potentially Spurs breaking into that top four, potentially even winning it. I thought that was a little bit premature. Uh, then they go after the international break, they go three defeats, Chelsea three. Crystal Palace 3 and Arsenal 3, so it was a really roller coaster of emotions there. But I think when I look at Spurs this season, I think they're probably where they should be in terms of in and around the top eight. Harry Kane and Hyung Min Son's link up will be key to Spurs' prospects. Having recently combined up at Newcastle, the pair have now scored or assisted each other 35 times in the Premier League, one behind the iconic Chelsea duo of Didier Drogba and Frank Lampard. Hume Son and Harry Kane certainly are very, very good. They work in tandem, they're superb. They look for each other, look for one another. You can tell every time one of them gets the ball, they're looking automatically, where's the other one? Where's this one? So they are an unbelievable partnership. They complement each other really well in terms of Harry Kane will drop in and, and pick up their intelligent positions. Son's got the pace to run in behind, be a real threat. And by him running in behind, that allows Harry Kane to pick up the spaces as well. So as I said, they complement each other, they trust each other, which is a big thing. This fixture last time out saw the points return to Manchester. Son gave Spurs a 1-0 lead just before the break, but United struck back with second-half goals from Fred, Edinson Cavani and Mason Greenwood to seal a comfortable away win. United's history of dominance throughout the Premier League era means it's perhaps no surprise that they have the better of this fixture. These two ever-presents have now met 58 times in this competition, with the Red Devils winning almost two-thirds of those contests. But based on current form, another United win looks less certain. They have only picked up one point in their last four league matches, and even their defensive solidity has deserted them, only managing one clean sheet in their last 14 league games. So can their leaky defence hold off Spurs' attack? I think it's going to be very, very tight. I think it'll be a cagey affair, but I think Spurs will just about eke it out. So I'm going to say 2-1 to Tottenham.
Liverpool's devastating display at Old Trafford saw them win 5-0 for the second game running, this time recording their biggest ever victory at Old Trafford. They now face Graham Potter's Brighton, who is still in the top five, despite their 4-1 loss to Manchester City. Mo Salah will be looking to continue the incredible form that's brought him 15 goals in just 12 games this season in all competitions. He's now the Premier League's top-scoring African player, surpassing Didier Drogba. He needed just 28 final third touches to bag a hat-trick and an assist against United. And here comes Naby Keita. Liverpool have three. It's Mo. Fiddled it through for Jota. And there's Mo Salah. It is four. Mo Salah... Another Mo Salah hat-trick. Liverpool are, in fact, one of just three teams to have conceded fewer than Brighton this season. Despite last weekend's heavy defeat, the Seagulls have been solid at the back, outperforming Opta's expected goals against model by letting in 2.3 goals fewer than their XGA. Graham Potter benched Shane Duffy last weekend, but fellow centre-back Lewis Dunk has made the division's third most blocks this term. He's also fifth on the list of the most successful passers, a category led by Liverpool's Virgil van Dijk. One measure of Brighton's progression under Potter is their record against this weekend's opponents. In their first Premier League season, Liverpool put nine goals past them, conceding just one in reply. But last term, the Seagulls took four points from the then-defending champions, drawing one all at the Amex and then triumphing 1-0 at Anfield. Their only Premier League win in this fixture, home or away. Manchester City continue to keep pace with Liverpool and Chelsea and Pep Guardiola's side showed their class at Brighton last time out, thanks in no small part to Phil Foden, who ended up with two goals and an assist at the Amex, the first time he's ever had three goal involvements in a Premier League match. Foden. It's Riyad Mahrez and there is goal number four. Patrick Vieira visits another of his former clubs this weekend, hoping his side's results begin to match their performances. Their inability to close out wins has been a source of frustration for the Crystal Palace manager. They've drawn four in a row and six in total, the most by any side in the league. Crystal Palace will reflect on perhaps a win that got away. Newcastle were the visitors at Selhurst Park on Saturday and fell behind to Christian Benteke's header. But Callum Wilson's smart finish gave Newcastle a share of the spoils. That game was the Magpies' first since they relieved Steve Bruce of his duties. They now begin their search for a replacement and will be hoping whoever they bring in can turn their fortunes around. The club currently languish second bottom and are without a win in the league. Well, a new manager always brings, hopefully, a bounce, a lift for players, new ideas, different voice. It's amazing how many times I've seen it over the years. I've been in dressing rooms myself when a manager's gone, a new manager comes in, and then the, 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 the fog seems to lift, and it's a new opportunity for some that haven't been getting a game. Um, and the whole place feels like there's a bit more of a buzz about it. Callum Wilson's stunner in South London took his tally to four for the season. Fellow forward Alanson Maximan is the club's next highest on two. And it's that pair who seem to dominate the attacking stats for the Magpies. Keeping them both fit will be essential. I think there's no question Alanson Maximan is a Newcastle type player. So no surprises that he's become very popular in the tune already. Callum Wilson can finish, there is no question about that that he can score goals if he's given the service. So the onus falls very much on Callum Wilson and, and then Alan St. Maximan to play the support role. If anything happens to those two, they're in trouble. Mason Mount, terrific goal. Mason Mount's hat-trick, seventh heaven. Thomas Tuchel made seven alterations to his starting 11 heading into the match against Norwich, taking Chelsea to a league-high 34 changes so far this season. It's indicative of how well the German head coach is using his impressive squad depth as they go in search of more trophies. I think anyone who finishes above Chelsea will win the league. If Chelsea don't win it, I could see someone pipping them to the title, but I don't see them falling away. I don't think Tuchel 
will allow that to happen. They're going to have their moments. Against Brentford, they were fortunate to get all three. Hung in there, relied on their goalkeeper, who was outstanding on the day. So there's still work for Thomas Tuchel to do, but Chelsea, I think, will get better, and that's a problem for the rest of the league. Ben Chilwell was on target again for the Blues against the Canaries, the fullback scoring for a third consecutive league game. He played no part in the first six fixtures of the season, but his form at both ends of the pitch is currently making him undroppable. He's very talented. The game comes nice and easily to Ben. He's got a he's very easy on the eye in possession at the top of the field, can score a goal, can get into the box. But I think it's still quite new to him playing for a club like Chelsea. I think he's now realising he's got to be 8 out of 10 every week. And I think he's capable of it. I think if he drives himself on, Ben, I think he'll be Chelsea's regular left back for, for some time. When Chelsea made this trip last season, an own goal and a Tammy Abraham strike earned them the win. And the return fixture in February produced the same result, as the Blues completed a Premier League double over Newcastle for only the fourth time. Those victories mean that Chelsea have now won 27 of their 52 Premier League meetings with the Magpies. Newcastle have prospered in just 13, and this fixture on Saturday will be another tough test. The men in black and white have conceded 20 goals in the league this season, with only Norwich shipping more. In contrast, Chelsea have let in the fewest, keeping six clean sheets so far. With Chelsea firm favourites, does that take some of the pressure off Newcastle? They're up against a very good team. They've got nothing to lose. And I think Newcastle now need to start playing with that no-fear kind of attitude. This is a new dawn, this is a new era. They've got new owners. It's time now for everyone at the club to stitch it together and get them going in the right direction. Who knows, if they score first in this one, this could be the turning point for them. West Ham remain unbeaten on the road this season and David Moyes' side delivered a superb display on their last trip to this weekend's opponents, Aston Villa. After a goalless first half, the Hammers took the lead through Thomas Socek, with last season's star loney Jesse Lingard doubling the advantage. Villa's Ollie Watkins pulled one back, but Lingard's second goal of a delightful debut secured a 3-1 win. Lingard has since returned to parent club Manchester United, but provided three of West Ham's ten shots on target that day. Villa had the better of the possession and showed threat in the final third, but with only two shots on target, Dean Smith admitted the better side won. But you can almost always count on his team to have a go, and their attacking intent this season has seen them draw more fouls than any other side, even after foul magnate Jack Grealish's departure. John McGinn's forays forward have made him the most likely to force opposing defenders to commit. West Ham captain Declan Rice will be one man looking to halt Villa's progress in midfield. So far this season, his success in tackles could be improved, but he's up there with the best in the league when it comes to passing accuracy, finding a teammate 92% of the time. Rice has led the Hammers to a fine start to the current campaign and keeping a settled side looks to be one of the keys to David Moyes' success. As well as using the joint fewest players this season, they've also made just four changes to their starting 11s. Now time for our quiz question. Scoring a hat-trick in a Premier League game against Manchester United is a rare feat. So can you name the last player before Mohamed Salah to manage it? The answer's coming up later. What does your family tree look like? A towering yellow wood, a reaching willow, a mighty baobab? Or is it more like the exceptional aspen forests of North America? This complex group of separate individuals is a surprisingly simple and unified whole. Much like a family, each new generation of growth builds on the last, creating an enduring legacy the shade under which your family will sit for years to come. Your family, your legacy. Let's talk.
Watch it come to life. Inhale its aroma. Feel its velvety touch. Taste its perfection. Hear its gentle crack. Reach for excellence. Awaken your senses with Lint Excellence from the Lint Master Chocolatier. <laughs> neighborhood is about to get noisy as Soweto, Manchester and Milan divide. This is Unbeatable Football. Stay connected to DSTV and enjoy every minute on your world of champions. I quench the thirst. Burberry Hero. The new fragrance for men. Chance for Tielemans. Oh, what a strike! Towards the near post, flicked on, and it's there! On his Dakar as he sprung the offside track. He's one on one. He's laid it off for James Madison. Victory at Brentford gave Leicester back to back wins in the Premier League for the first time since April. Having been forced to play much of the season with a back four due to injuries, Brendan Rodgers is now reaping the rewards of being able to play three at the back and the return of his most experienced defender. Johnny Evans is absolutely fundamental to what Leicester City are doing. They missed him so badly while he was out with injury and illness uh, and his return has been uh, so welcome and the results have picked up consequently. It has raised the level of Kalyar Sionchu, who we know is a fantastic player but had not been in good form at all. And it's also brought Daniel Lamarty to the fore as well. Ianacho finds Tillmans! Oh, it's another stunning goal! The Foxes have also been boosted by the form of Yuri Tielemans. The Belgian has been involved in five goals this season, as well as creating more chances than any of his teammates. Talks over a new contract continue. Supporters will be desperate for him to commit to the club. Party again, he's in there! Aubameyang against Martinez. Save, but the rebound is put in. And here is Smith Rowe. Still Emil Smith Rowe goes, and the deflection was all important. Although they conceded late in the game, the manner of Arsenal's victory over Aston Villa last Friday will have delighted Mikel Arteta. His side are averaging more shots per game this season than in any of his previous campaigns in charge. The accuracy of those shots is decreasing though, so improving on that will be the next target. For Arsenal, you don't know what you're going to get. And that's been a mark, frustratingly for Arsenal, of Mikel Arteta's reign so far. They show signs of encouragement and then some real reasons to be concerned. So now, Arsenal, after a real morale-boosting victory, will feel it's time to get some consistency and urgently if they want to have a successful season. 21-year-old Emil Smith-Rowe contributed a goal and an assist last time out to further highlight the wealth of young talent Arteta is hoping can achieve that success. In fact, their starting 11 this season is, on average, over a year younger than any other side. Neatly done by Ricardo. Jamie Vardy. A mistake by Anderson. And Ian Acho punishes Crystal Palace. Yuri Tielemans. And Dak is round the back. With Jamie Vardy a doubt for the visit of Arsenal, Brendan Rodgers could give Patson Dakar his first league start of the season. The Zambian has been in scintillating form recently, averaging a goal involvement every 76 minutes in all competitions, a better ratio than both Vardy and Kalechi Iheanacho. McAllister, clipping it in dangerously, Mopé was arriving. Another important contribution from Ramsdale. Aiming to keep Leicester's strike force at bay is likely to be Aaron Ramsdale. Only Eduard Mendy has a better save percentage than the 23-year-old, and Arsenal are yet to lose with the Englishman between the sticks. But will that run continue on Saturday?
Arsenal don't actually have a bad record at the King Power Stadium. Um, however, it's going to be a tough place to go with Leicester finding a bit of form just at the right time for them, the wrong time for Arsenal. So it's one I think we should all be looking forward to. Two clubs aspiring towards the top end of the Premier League, but maybe just below that top rung. And so it should be a real one to captivate the audiences. It's Wolves against Everton at Molyneux on Monday and the visitors will be eager to bounce back from their incredible collapse last weekend. The corresponding fixture last season saw the Toffees take the spoils despite Ruben Neves' best efforts. And Wolves had no more luck when the sides met at Goodison Park in the final week of last season. 6,500 Blues fans were back in the stadium that day and would have been delighted to get to half-time level. Three minutes after the break, Richarlison made Wolves pay. That match was the last time Carlo Ancelotti took charge of Everton with a home crowd cheering on the team. And despite Wolves having more possession and corners, it was the home side who managed more shots and, crucially, scored the only goal of the game. Both clubs are now under new management, but struggles in front of goal for the men in black and gold has not eased up. New signing Huang Hee Chan is doing his best to address that. He's struck four times in just six league appearances. One man you can rely on to supply the ammo for the likes of Huang and Raul Jimenez is midfielder Jean Moutinho. The experienced Portuguese is making more than half his passes in the opposition half and at an impressive accuracy of 86%. It could be a case of back to basics for Everton after their most recent setback. Never before had any Rafael Benitez team conceded five goals in a Premier League game, but the defeat to Watford changed that. The Spaniard will demand his team show more resolve. What a difference a week can make in football. After conceding five at home to Liverpool, Watford scored five at Goodison Park. A hat-trick from Joshua King against the club he spent an unhappy... Visitors Southampton drew yet again last time out against Burnley, their fifth draw of the season. In a side struggling for goals, a real positive is the emergence of Armando Brogia, scoring for the second start in a row. At Carrow Road, bottom side Norwich hosts Leeds. The Canaries' return to Premier League life hit a new low last weekend with their 7-0 thrashing at Chelsea. But Leeds are a team also scrapping for results. 17th in the table and now out of the League Cup too. Their last Premier League outing saw them draw one all with Wolves, but Marcelo Bielsa's side needed a stoppage time Rodrigo penalty to salvage that point. The team lined up in a 4-4-1-1 formation, with Daniel James playing just off Rodrigo, but it was another unconvincing result. Semedo, it's Raul Jimenez, it's Wang! Wolves are on the march again! Rodrigo! He may just have saved the day! The Spaniard's strike from 12 yards was his first goal in any competition since the final day of last season. But his main contribution has been his creativity. He's forged 15 chances for teammates this term. Rafinha is the only Leeds player who's made more opportunities. Norwich's defensive shortcomings earned unwanted attention at Stamford Bridge, but their attacking output is also a concern. They have the lowest XG in the division, finding the net just twice so far. No side has ever managed fewer goals after as many Premier League games. The Canaries may be making some unwanted history, but their historical record against Leeds in this competition is positive. There were six Premier League meetings between the sides back in the 90s, with Norwich winning four of those and losing just once. In the first of the three matches played on this ground, supporters were treated to a six-goal thriller. It finished 4-2 to the hosts, with Chris Sutton bagging a hat-trick. Earlier, we asked you for the last player before Mohamed Salah to score a Premier League hat-trick against Manchester United. And the answer is Samuel Eto'o. The Cameroonian great hit a treble against David Moyes' United side back in January 2014. The three he scored that day made up a third of his total Premier League goals for Chelsea.
Burnley had Ivorian Maxwell Cornet to thank for both their goals against Southampton last weekend. He first opened the scoring at St Mary's and then later rescued the Clarets a point with his third goal in three Premier League starts. Cornet goes for it. Oh, what a beauty! Astounding strike from Maxwell Cornet! Burnley now welcome Brentford to Turf Moor with Thomas Frank's men keen to avoid a third straight defeat. The Bees have scored 11 from their first nine top flight games, but that tally could easily be higher. Brian and Burmo alone has hit the woodwork a league high six times. Force, what a chance! Off the post again! Force can't bundle it over the line. Brian and Burmo must wonder what he's got to do. Last weekend, it was goals galore. 40 scored across the 10 games in match week nine and three players bagging three. The action resumes on Saturday at the King Power with a meeting of two informed sides. After seeing off the Seagulls, City now face the Eagles. Leaders Chelsea are on Tyneside. Spurs and Manchester United will both be desperate for three points when they go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. That's before a Sunday doubleheader and a Monday night match at Molyneux. But the final word must go to Mo. Even by his own incredibly high standards, Liverpool's Egyptian king is in the form of his life. The first player ever to score in 10 straight games in all competitions for the club, and now the Premier League's record goalscorer from Africa. Can Salah keep his astonishing run going this weekend? From Lindsay Hooper and me, Danny Jameson. Goodbye.